Welcome back everyone to Primetime Treasure Headquarters. As many of you know, I had a flood in this location. Just look up, you could see the destroyed ceiling. Uh, so this week is hopefully when the contractor is going to get started on redoing this entire room. So I have inventory in here that I need to get out of. It's inventory I haven't seen in years. I did a video last week in which I emptied out that bottom shelf that you see there. But I have stuff in here that um, I just have not seen in the longest time. So I want to get that stuff off of there, uh, start processing it, get some of it listed, and uh, just get out of here. So let's look through it and see what's there. The first thing that I'm going to start pulling out of here and just getting uh, organized are these Funko Pops. Um, they are taking up a bunch of room and actually... I need to integrate that in with another project that I'm working on over here, which is you could see here there's some residual uh, Funkos. Now these are actually called Dorbs. They're like, you know, like a sister product to Funko. They're not worth as much as regular Funko Pops, but I need to get this out of here because it's the only type of item on this shelf that is not listed inventory. Everything else on this shelf and up, they're all items that I have listed uh, in my eBay store. Now, this shelf on the bottom, I still need to empty this. That's actual inventory that's not listed, but this, getting this out of here, will actually help me uh, have this whole shelf now for listed inventory. And Pink Panther's here to supervise things as usual, <laughs> but we've got uh, Symmetra from the Overwatch video game series. So I just got these uh, tubbies that Mrs. Primetime got for me. So we're just going to put things in here for now and then store them in another location. Uh, we've got Blackfire. This is a Toys R Us uh, exclusive. So always look for these little stickers on Funko Pops because um, you know that could help increase the value sometimes. Okay, as you can see here, this is one of the Dorbs items. It is made by Funko, as you can also see. Uh, this one here is Captain America Civil War. Uh, it is a GameStop exclusive, so there's another one of these uh, stickers. You know, usually with Dorbs, um, I combine them together with other Dorbs and sell them in like a little lot. Now keep in mind, one of the things when you're looking up Funkos, or Dorbs, that really helps if you're out in the field and just trying to really quickly get a value uh, estimate on it. There's always a number on the top right. So like you could see that one there is 130 and you could see this one here is uh, 454. So that helps with the uh, lookups. Now sometimes they repeated the numbers with different characters so you can't always just look up the number and figure out the character. So sometimes you have to type in uh, both, but it could be a little shortcut that helps out sometimes. Uh, and you can see here the size difference. That's a traditional size Funko and that's a Dorbs. Now, if you come across a Funko Pop lot and it's mostly Dorbs, uh, I'm gonna tell you for the most part, you usually wanna stay away from that unless you get it for just like some amazing, incredible deal. There's exceptions. There's like, you know, limited edition Dorbs that can sell for good money, but you gotta be really careful. Uh, and you also have to be careful with the Funko Pops because uh, there's plenty of Funko Pops out there that are just junk and they're not really worth anything. But I've also made a ton of money scoring great Funko Pop collections. So um, you have to look for popular themes, popular characters, and uh, limited editions and exclusives. So just keep all that in mind with Funkos. Yay, I've got some space here now. I cleared all those dorbs out. I moved them right over here. I'm gonna show them to you because I'm gonna actually put a bunch up right now and just list them. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got a bunch of different Raven ones. So I could put together a little Raven lot right there. Uh, we've got some Power Rangers that I could put together, one of which glows in the dark. Uh, the other one uh, does not glow in the dark ones, tend to be popular. And then I've also got these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones. So. Uh, that's great. I've got them all with the different headbands and everything. So I'm going to put up a few lots uh, right there. Now, another thing over here that's uh, just given me some uh, freed up space is something that just sold. This right here, uh, I want to just talk to you about it here for a second because this sold for $40. And uh, this is something Mrs. Primetime uh, picked up at a thrift store for just a couple of bucks. It's got a cool uh, Italian kind of mountain ocean uh, scene here. It's got like a little bit of a 
little lock there, open it up, and it has a little uh, mirror right here. So there you go, you can see me right in the background. That proves I'm not a vampire, by the way. You could see my reflection. And uh, even though I don't get much sleep at night. And so you can see there, it's pretty cool. Um, it looks to be made of uh, cedar. It's really nice. So if you ever see anything like this, pick it up. It might make a nice sale. So I'm glad that I went ahead and checked the comps on the Starfire Funko Pops because I will only really lot them together if I can't get at least $10 for one individually. Uh, so, and sometimes that's the case. Now this one here, I listed it for the cheapest that you could find that available online and that's $50. So that's a great price for an individual Funko Pop. It's sold for right around that price several times. So I am not gonna have a problem getting something close to that number. And then this one here, I also listed it for the cheapest you could find it, and that's $17. So, you know, that's not bad for uh, two Funkos right there. And so um, separate listings is what it's gonna be for those. All right, so I already have the two Starfire Funkos listed and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones. I'm gonna list the other ones later. This one Raven is an extra, so I'm just gonna keep this one here from now. So. These are just all my extras in the container. I put the lid on it, store it elsewhere, and then get to the rest of this stuff. All right, now that those are out of the way, let me show you two items that are taking up a bunch of shelf space that just don't need to be sitting here. We've got this one here. It's this R2-D2 measuring cup set. Uh, look at that. You know, it's not gigantic, but it's big and bulky, and it's taking up a lot of space on the shelf. This one's taking up even more space right here. This is this Darth Vader uh, lightsaber set. And anything like this that's boxed, I mean, these are just really easy things to list because I just have to take a picture of here, of here, and of the sides, and then I'm all set. And look at that. You know, if I do that, let me show you what kind of space that's going to free up for me. I mean, look at this. This is before. Look at all the space that this takes up. And I take this out and it really frees things up for me. So I would rather use this type of space for items that are going to take more time to photograph and to list, you know, longer uh, involvement types of items as opposed to these two things, which are just, you know, lickety split quick lists. So yeah, just got to get those out of here. And speaking of lickety split quick lists, uh, maybe I just coined the new term there, but uh, this is one, I actually picked this one up relatively recently. That's why I was kind of hanging on the edge here. I just, just randomly put it there. But um, yeah, I could just get this one listed quick too. So all three of these things go right up. All right, new day, new shirt. I'm back for a second crack at this shelf. I just could not get it all cleared out in that one day uh, because I just have so many other things that I'm trying to uh, balance out. So. Let's get cracking. I see you, Pinky. <laughs> Let's move you over here. Okay, what do we got here? We've got a Harley Davidson uh, motorcycle. Uh, this was a set that came out. Um, you could see on the back, they have the different types. Uh, and the one that we have here is the little Stinger. So uh, these could go for between like 10 and 18 bucks. So anything that I see really that I come across that's toy related, I'm just snapping pictures of it and getting it listed. Like everything I showed in the prior video I said I was taking pictures of to list, those things are all listed already. So these are gonna be the next thing. Uh, looks like there's a Star Wars item here. Let's see what this is. Okay, so we've got a clone trooper army. So, you know, as long as I could at least get 10 bucks out of the piece, I'll list it because it's light first class item. If I can't get at least 10 bucks out of it, that's my threshold. Then I'll wait and combine it with uh, with another item. So it uh, looks like we've got something over here. Oh, I know what this is. This is just some random toy that I got in a big toy lot. So I don't remember when I checked comps previously if this one sells or not. So uh, let me double check, I'll get back to you. All right, so I just did some comp checking and you know, one of the things you have to pay attention with toys is sometimes uh, there's some subtle differences between them that you have to be careful of that can make a difference in terms of price. Like this one here, you can see, comes with four expressive interchangeable masks. That makes this one worth a little bit more than just the standard version. The standard version without the mask be worth about 15 bucks. This one uh, worth about 18, 18.50, something like that. So I'll get this one listed. And then I also checked 
Uh, and on this one, which the thing to be careful of with this when you're looking up comps is that um, the subtle difference here would be the color of the figure inside. So this is the green one, but they have another pack that looks just like it, except this character here is yellow. Uh, has like some, not totally yellow, but has like some like yellow features on it. Like this one has the green. Um, they're not that different in terms of price. This one right now, the cheapest you could find it is about $30. And the other one has sold for between 30 and 35 in the yellow. But I'm just pointing that out to be careful when you're checking comps to make sure that you're looking at the identical package because sometimes you could wind up overspending thinking you're paying for something that's worth more than it actually is because yours doesn't have the same uh, characteristics of um, what it is that you just checked the price of. All right, so these are all listed. Remember, fourth quarter is not too far away, so if you have any toys laying around, this is the time to start getting those things listed onto eBay because people will be doing Christmas shopping pretty soon. In fact, some people have already started, and toys, as you know, is one of the main things that people look for. Uh, one of the things I also wanted to point out here in terms of just listing strategy is that, you know, when you're cleaning and organizing like this, this actually really helps out a lot because you know, I'm gonna make other sales today and I wanna have ones to replace them. I'd rather have these already photographed and ready to go to replace those items that sold rather than having a bunch of things that sell and then me having to go around and look for things to start photographing. So the more you could get a jump on things and get ahead of the game, the better for your business. All right, all right, I see it, I see it. Thanks, Pink Panther. Pink Panther called me over here because he sees another toy here and he thought that I might have forgot about it. So good job, buddy. Thanks a lot. So what do we have here? We have got no! uh, evil... Er what? <laughs> Pink Panther fainted. Yeah, he's kind of scary. Uh, this is Evil Ernie. You know, keep your kids away from anything Evil Ernie related. Keep them by Bert and Ernie, uh, but not Evil Ernie. Evil Ernie is as he sounds and as he looks. He is bent on death and destruction. He's not from Marvel or DC, which is why you may not have heard of him before. Uh, he was uh, put out through uh, Eternity Comics and Chaos Comics. Uh, writer Brian Polito, who I've talked about before, has been involved in his creation as well as artist uh, Steven Hughes, who I may have mentioned as well. This is a glow-in-the-dark uh, figure that was put out by Wizard. Now, if it was in the uh, original complete sealed container, you know, you could get like 20 bucks, maybe squeeze a few more dollars out of it. Uh, what am I gonna be able to get for an incomplete Evil Ernie figure with just these accessories? There looks like there's like an ax missing here, so um, it probably half of that, you know, maybe somewhere between 10 and 15 bucks if I'm lucky. So, uh, but you know, we'll try and see what we get out of it. Oh, and duh, there's the ax right there. So let me just take that, slot that right into here. All right, there we go. Now I'm much more confident this will sell having all the accessories. All right, I gotta put this away and get out the smelling salt for Pink Panther. <laughs> all right, so on to the next part over here. Wait a minute. What is going on down there? <laughs> what? What? Another workers comp claim? Oh my goodness, how am I gonna stay in business? Oh boy. This is what happens when your employees are stuffed animals. <laughs> All right, well, while Pink Panther is resting, we could look into some more of these items. As you can see here, uh, we've got some Pokemon tins with some cards inside of them. And uh, this one doesn't have that many in there. I'd say it's probably like a third of the way full, but uh, these two are full. I remember where I got these. I got them at a garage sale. And I've just got to find the time and find a way to go through these efficiently and sort out the ones that are more valuable than others and just bulk the other ones out. Uh, I have got a ton of Pokemon and Magic the Gathering cards. All right, so this is the joining room here in PTHQ. And as you can see here, there's a big tote filled with cards and then there's some on top. This is mostly Magic the Gathering and Pokemon cards, but there are some other cards uh, mixed in here. But I'm just going to take these for now and just you know, move them over here just so we have uh, things in a consistent location and off of that shelf. And eventually, I'll figure out what to do with this and the other boxes of 
magic and Pokemon cards I have because this is just a small uh, sample of it all. All right, now just a little side note here to answer a viewer question that came in in terms of what I do uh, with these crochet blankets that I pick up when they have a smell to them and they need to be cleaned. Um, what I do, it's really easy. Just put them in the washing machine on delicate and do the same thing in the dryer just put it on delicate don't dry it all the way uh, put a dryer sheet in there just to give it a nice fresh smell and then air dry it that's usually sufficient uh, but if it still has a little bit of a smell on it you could spray a little bit of uh, febreze on there and um, should be all set so uh, then we just fold them up uh, you know get them listed and that's it all right, now I've been saving this mystery box, this box and this binder towards the end uh, after we've gotten to all the stuff that's out in the open. So let's just move this to the side. And what you could see here is mostly Dragonlance books. I've talked about Dragonlance before. It is uh, my favorite book series. I absolutely loved it as a kid. There's some other books here. There's a bunch of Star Trek books. And I have tons of Star Trek books, so and they're spread out all over the place. So I've got to consolidate those. But Dragonlance is what I always look for when I'm out. And, um, you know, you'll see it from time to time. Pick them up in big bundles like this, as you could see. And you could sell them in any kind of, you know, mixture or lot. Although you will tend to do... Uh, better with them. Let me push that back there. You'll tend to do better with them when you could get the trilogies. There's tons of trilogies. Like you could see here, um, we've got Heroes Volume 2 and Heroes uh, Volume 3. And then down there on the bottom, there's Heroes Volume 1. So um, that's your best chance of selling them. But you could again sell them in um, mixed lots as well. Oh my goodness, look at this. We've got more Pokemon cards up here. Uh, oh, there are Pokemon toys in there, not cards. Let's, let's open this up. Let's see what we got in here. I kind of got a little distracted. I didn't expect that back there. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so that's what we've got in here. There's a bunch of Pokemon toys, trinkets, um, you know, like little figures and things. So I'll just make some kind of, you know, combination, a lot of these and uh, sell them that way. But I want to get these things out of this tin and put them in like a clear bag or something because you know, as you can see the problem is that i didn't even know it was in here um so i thought there were cards but turns out there's figures uh let's see what's in these i don't know if there's cards or figures but what's this okay this is one of the german books i was talking about this the other day that i bought a lot of german books that's probably what's down there on the bottom so i need to get those out of there so i could list those but let's see what is here oh look at this Look at this. Yep, so that's what we've got in this box, a bunch of Pokemon minifigures. So I'll take the ones from in there, combine them with this, put them in a clear bag, and then set up some kind of lot. Uh, so then the issue is what's in this one here? More figures or, yeah, look at this, more figures. Yep, so this is great. It's the third box in which we have some minifigures. So just to give you a little frame of reference, um, there was someone recently who just sold a lot of 65 Pokemon minifigures from Tomy, T-O-M-Y, and those sold for $150. So there's way more than 65 in here. I just gotta figure out uh, which type that I have. So that'll take a little bit of time, but the main goal right now is just get these things out of these tins. And by the way, you could just sell the Pokemon tins. There's collectors out there that want those. So that's what I'm gonna do to get rid of some of this bulk. All right, so the final tally here is 11 Dragonlance books. We've got four Star Trek books, two Halo books, and three Batman books. Uh, one other thing just to tell you with regards to Dragonlance books is make sure when you're checking comps, you pay very close attention to the covers because people will pay a lot more money for the early covers that look different from those in later prints. So be very, very careful about that and other types of paperbacks as well. And there it is. That's a lot of Pokemon minifigures. All right, so I was pulling these German books out one by one, but it was just taking too long. And I figured, you know what, just to save time, I'll just do one quick layout of them just to show them to you. But I'm gonna get these out of here. All right, well, here they are all laid out as Pink Panther resumes drinking fluids. I'm sure we're all happy to hear that. 
Uh, no Mountain Dew for him though, it's too big for him. He can't handle that, so he's starting with some sparkling apple. So we'll see how that works. But you know, the temptation when you're dealing with stuff that you're not really familiar with, and certainly, you know, German books is not something that's in my wheelhouse, um, is to just lot them up and get them out of there, right? Well, I don't like doing that. I like to try to make sure there's nothing in here of significant value before I do something like that. So, like, if we look at this one here, this is a German cookbook. You could see here the word diet, that refers to diet, and this was done by a doctor here. So this is a diet for people who are sick, and if you go through it, you could see the different uh, aspects of the cookbook. Now, you could look this one up, and you could see that in Europe, this goes for about $13 or so. So that might be one you might consider to go into a lot, but then this one here, the Babel Schnut, which I have no idea what that means. If anyone else here knows, I would assume it has something to do with a baby, uh, but I'm not sure exactly what that exact term does. So maybe someone who knows German can, can let me know. I looked it up in Google Translate, couldn't figure it out. But this book right now is on eBay for $25 plus like $50 shipping. That's to US, but to Europe, it's like $40 shipping around the same price. So you know, no recent sold on it, but it's not a common book. So that's something I would not want to just include in some lot with other books here that might not be, you know, worth it. So that's not something I would want to include in some lot with whatever books in here turn out not to be worth much. So, you know, that's really the same principle with any type of uh, lot that you're dealing with. You want to try to figure out which are the valuable ones, which are not valuable, sell the valuable ones individually, and then lot the other ones up. All right, so now that we got all that stuff cleared off the shelf, the next step is what's in this binder, what's in this black box, and what is in this mystery box? Let's find out. All right, let's put this down, push that back, and open this baby up. 